Hey guys, EST here, back with part four of my ongoing series on emergency heating in your house. Now it is one of the last cold days here, because spring is approaching, but it is about 33 degrees outside, Fahrenheit of course, and it's 63 degrees inside my house, so I'm going to see if we can get it back up to 70. I basically just cut power to anything that gave off heat, and after a couple hours it, it got down this low. It didn't take long, because the wind is really blasting too, so uh, if that's your scenario, is just... Pure, and by pure I mean 91%, isopropyl alcohol, which is about, you know, $1 to $2 at the drugstore, if you got that on your sink somewhere as an antiseptic or whatever, is that a, a, something you can burn clean? Because we all know, if it's a hydrocarbon, the answer is no. I mean, anything from, I think the thinnest one I can think of is hexane, aka lighter fluid, which is like octane gasoline, but too shorter on the hydrocarbon chain, they both burn with black soot and fumes and they're not an option. And then all the way up to paraffin wax, which is like a 50 plus chain molecule, that stuff made my air unbreathable and I had to leave, so spoiler alert from part three. So we all know alcohol burns clean. In fact, the first one was gelled alcohol and the second one was methanol, which is very similar. Methanol took it as far as, um, you know, leaving the air as clean and unscented as possible. So that's, that's the winner so far, but... Who just keeps methanol gel sternos around? Or diethylene glycol, which it turns out put off more um, more uh, carbon monoxide. So uh, speaking of that, we got the carbon monoxide detector here. I've got my smoke alarm right behind me. And I've got the thermostat directly to my right. So we're all set. Um, this is a baking sheet meant for, I think, five or 600 degrees. It's uh, steel. And this, I believe, is an aluminum cake pan. So all together, 10 bucks. And uh, like I said, this is 91% isopropyl alcohol. Uh, they mix, like, I think peroxide with, like, something else, and then it creates a 11 to 1 ratio, which is why you get 91%, and the rest is water. So they just uh, mix those two compounds together and make isopropyl alcohol. Now, this isn't self-oxidizing, so in theory, if I were to just, like, cover this with something, it would immediately go out. If I were to pour water in there, it would immediately go out. So not the most dangerous, but, I mean, we're going to have, like, a square foot of flames going, but because of that... I think it's going to heat up really quickly. Now, I will say that my smoke alarm is sensitive to heat. When I actually uh, fully open the oven after it's been baking at about 450, the hot air usually sets it off. Because if it's above, I don't know, probably 100, 120, 130 degrees, it will just go off assuming that there's a fire. Because what else would cause that? I mean, baking literally anything. So I guess that's a design flaw. But uh, let's find out. Oh, and I've got to start the timer, too. All right, just started the timer. Uh, we're all set. Let's see what happens. We'll light it up. There we go. And you can see that is an awfully yellow flame compared to like, you know, diethylene glycol sternos or meth methanol sternos. So yellow means carbon monoxide. But I've lit up like, like this half full and burned it for like 20, 30 minutes in my garage while doing work and I was fine and I had a carbon monoxide detector in there. But your results may vary. Also, I should probably throw out there, uh, don't do this unless it's an emergency. <laughs> but boy, the heat coming off this. It's actually so hot that I, I kind of fear putting it on the stove because, like, it might be hot enough to damage the dials or something. And th those are meant to take some serious heat. So there is almost no particularly safe way to do this. I guess if you have, like, a non-flammable, non-wood table you can just put in the middle of somewhere... I'm also kind of worried about the temperature of the ceiling. So what I have done in the past is either grabbed my smallest pot, so not this one, but like the one behind it, probably can't see it in the shot, or just like a mug. A mug is pretty good, but a lot of ceramics can break at high temperatures. So it has to be like a high temperature mug, and even then, put it inside of something else. Like put it inside of an aluminum cake pan um, and just burn it that way. It will burn a lot slower, but the thermal output of one of those is about double to triple what one of those like synthetic... Uh, um, fake fireplace gel things that I did in part one of the video. It, it, it burns hotter than that. And this, this is ridiculous. This is probably 10 to 50,000 BTUs. <laughs> but you can see it's burning really quickly. Um, but unlike hydrocarbon stuff, it doesn't splash. It doesn't start to like bubble and, and like splash little flaming particles out. So alcohol is a pretty clean burning fuel. I just have the strangest idea that this is going to put off a monstrous amount of carbon monoxide because of that sheer yellow. I mean, it's not like every yellow flame is just spewing out carbon monoxide. It's, it's a low oxygen thing, and I have plenty of oxygen in here. And when we burned everything else, we found out that there's enough oxygen in the, like, 400 square foot area that I closed off in my house here to burn, like, anything, and the amount of energy coming off of it will be enough to heat the house without spewing out carbon monoxide. Um, but even the really safe 
a methanol gel sternals. I put five of those in my car for about two to three hours, and they started to burn extremely yellow, and I threw a, a carbon monoxide detector in the window and closed it, and it went off. So... There is an amount of oxygen that will make anything bad. So we've almost burned up the whole fuel. It's been uh, not quite three minutes. <laughs> and so I thought I'd do this in real time. And the temperature is insane. The thermostat is saying 64, but you guys know from the other videos, all the hot air went to the top. So I had this problem in my uh, basement too, even with just like a, a regular electric heater. Um, you stick your hand up, like way up, like, like right here. Okay, it's about, eh, whatever, I'm right by the flames, hard to say. But you throw, go way, way, way up by the ceiling. I would say that my ceiling is about 110, 120 degrees right now. It's almost uncomfortable to keep my hand up there. And if I take my hand and go way down here, way down to the floor, uh, the floor is probably about eh, 62. <laughs> so, I mean, if you have a ceiling fan, turn it on, except that you're out of power. So, there's that. So, so far, I'm not getting many fumes, but I will say, from experience, just burning like a half a mug full of this stuff to just really rapidly heat up my basement, um, the thermal output is insane, and it gets a little fuming. You wouldn't think. It's pure, thin isopropyl alcohol that evaporates like crazy. I think the freezing point of that stuff is like negative 100 or something. It's like outrageous. It's so easy to vaporize, and it's so thin, and it's so clean burning... And there, there's only two ingredients to it, but, like, it must have leached plastic into it or something because the edges of whatever you're burning in will get a little bit of black soot, and that shouldn't happen unless I'm just burning dust or something, I don't know, but... And the air gets a little, like, eh, smells like something was burning, you know? Just a little bit. Okay, we're, the thermostat's already at 65. Me just standing here now that it's gone out... I mean, it feels like about 71 to me. <laughs> I mean, even with, with the infrared radiation coming off the flames hitting me, which is going to throw it off, even with that ceasing, it feels like it's above 70. Like, it's at the point where I would take off a jacket if I was wearing one. And I actually am. He probably, probably knows. I don't know why I said if. I mean, here it is. So I, I am going to take it off. So... I suspect that if I give it a couple minutes, the thermostat's probably going to hit 67 or 68. And that was... Right around five minutes. <laughs> so, unreal. Uh, we haven't had the smoke alarm go off, surprisingly. I'm going to go uh, stick my hand up by it. Yeah, it's hot. It is hot over there. I'm very surprised, actually, that that didn't go off. Um, There's not really, like, a visible haze in the air, and there's just a little bit of a smell. Just a tiny little bit. I'm going to go uh, sniff the other rooms. Yeah, no matter where I go, there's just that, that scent. Um... I would say it's a little tiny bit more noticeable than the gelled alcohol that I burned in the first edition of this video. Yeah, it just, it smells like somebody just like blew out like a hundred candles. Like there's like this weird sooty like metallic in the air and there shouldn't be because I mean, <laughs> aluminum doesn't oxidize until what, 1200 degrees or something? I guarantee it didn't hit that hot. In fact, alcohol doesn't even burn that hot. Um, yeah, no lightheadedness, no carbon monoxide going off. So, I mean, it was fast, it's a little bit smelly, and I burned probably 25 to 50 cents worth of fuel. So that's not bad. I mean, you put this stuff in a glass jar, you might get a little bit better results, too, than letting this stuff sit around. But I think I just bought this a couple months ago. And they actually have an expiration date listed on it, uh, 1022. Okay. Um, that's the expiration of the bottle itself, and I can tell you right now that's really low-grade plastic. So, I mean, if there was absolutely no other option, no propane, no other fuel, no sternos, no other alcohol. And honestly, I would burn this before I burned, like, you know, high-proof alcohol either, like drinkable alcohol, because that stuff's got nasty, like, sugar and additives and all that. You'll you'll get some smell in there if you light that up. Oh, yes. Uh, if there was no other fuel, you can't burn wood. And w would I do this before candles? Absolutely. God, that video was a disaster. <laughs> my Just my whole house was, was just wax smell. It, it was terrible. I literally had to leave. Candles for heating are a complete and non-option, and whoever on YouTube says, oh, candles are fine, let me do some measurements, whatever, they left it burning for three minutes and lied about it, I guarantee it. I guarantee you that's what they did. Anybody who left them burning for 30 minutes like I did it was standing outside after that, <laughs> let's just put it that way. So candles are out. Uh, this, let's see, yeah, the thermostat's at 66. It's starting to kind of mix, it's starting to cool down a little bit. I think if I poured about the same amount in, we'd, we'd probably hit 70 pretty comfortably. 
And like I said, this stuff you can keep it around to sanitize wounds. In fact, I would use it before peroxide. It's a little bit more effective. So, yeah, it's flammable, but you put it in like a glass jar or something solid, like a, like a metal canteen, um, one of those like travel mugs or whatever that's stainless. I think that'd be pretty safe. And you would have enough to heat up your whole house for like three or four hours just by like a five or ten minute burn. I mean, that's not bad if you can tolerate the smell in the air. Now, keep in mind, all the ratios, everything's linear. Um, I did point this out in my video about what to do if there's a power outage in, uh, like, a winter storm. Like, what's everything you can do? Like, covering windows, shutting doors, you know, doing this, turn off the water, you know, all that stuff. So, if you're already doing that, you're lowering the thermal conductivity of all your walls in your house in general, then keep in mind, you could probably sit comfortably in a jacket at, like, 50 to 55 Fahrenheit. I mean, maybe 60 for sure, especially if you're moving around or whatever, you got some mittens on, or you get up and do some jumping jacks every couple minutes or whatever. I think that would be decent. So then let's say it's, like, 30 or 40 outside. Well, it takes double the fuel to maintain double the temperature difference, or at least to initially create it. So let's do it really simple. You want it to be 70, it's 30 outside. Great. That takes X amount of fuel. If you just say, well, I could settle with 50, which is, you know, half the difference because it's 20, 20. Well, it's going to take half the fuel to heat your house up to 20 because you're, the temperature difference is linear as far as how quickly it loses heat. Well, the simplest way to put it is you're going to lose heat twice as quickly if it's 70 in here and it's 30 outside than if it's 50 in here and it's 30 outside because the temperature difference being maintained dictates the very linearly predictable flow of energy through your walls. Hopefully that makes sense. It's not too sciencey or mathematical or heady. It's just like, oh, you want to, you know, go from 50 to 100 or 50 to 200? Oh, it's going to take triple the fuel. Simple. That's what they mean by linear as opposed to, like, exponential. Kind of funny it works that way because if you want to accelerate a car from 0 to 50 or you want to accelerate a car from 0 to 100 miles an hour, it takes four times the fuel and four times the energy. So that's an example of, of a calculation that's not linear, but loss of heat and energy through uh, conduction through the walls, that is linear. And no joke, I didn't even look that up. I just remember it from high school. So, hey, I guess we are using weird, obscure stuff. So I'd call this experiment an overall success. Um, it wouldn't be the first thing I reach for, but in the average household, would somebody probably have some of this around or should they? Should you? Yes, for multiple different reasons. And that is it acceptable to take some of it and burn it to heat your house. I would say yes, if you can tolerate a little bit of taste and smell in there, just, just a bit. <laughs> Personally, I'm not going to repeat this. I'm going to go turn my furnace on. <laughs> so, uh, I, I guess I'd give this method maybe like a B minus. It, it's not great. It's not real safe. It's really fast, really effective, and you, you probably have enough to do it. So, yeah, I may, maybe B plus. I mean, A plus would be the, the method I'll gel, but like who has those? But like I said, you can buy them. Uh, they actually have them at Sam's Club. They don't have them at Costco. They do have them at Party USA typically. Otherwise, uh, there's that Websterrant.com. I think that was the name of the vendor. You can get them there for under a dollar shipped. And methanol is clean burning. It is so clean burning they can put it through cars for uh, cooling or boost or something like that. It's like nitrous, but like, I don't know, different or cheaper or something. I don't know. I'm not really a car guy. So that's still the winner. Uh, if you want to go see the winner and see how it performed, how long it took, what the numbers look like, um, that would be video number two. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching number four and check out the other great content on my channel. I'll see you guys next time.